I'm Vita Murrow. And I'm Ethan Murrow. And we're the co-creators of the new book, The Whale. I think I was three or something, and I wrote a pretty good book called Birdie the Painter with one of my parents, where I did some pretty loud illustrations and had a nice narrative about a bird that was a painter. And it sat in the hutch in our home for years. It was really my first foray into storytelling. That's probably a more interesting story than mine. Um, I don't know if I have as much spice to it, but I, my, my mother is a writer and she used to make um, little stapled folio books with us. Um, and so I used to create stories about every boyish thing you could think of, airplanes, submarines, um, et cetera, et cetera, and dozens and dozens of them. And our son now does the same thing. So it's fun to see that cycle back. Um, but yeah, really working with my parents on little handcrafted rough books, similar to what you're talking about. I think I'm happiest with the fact that the two young actors that we worked with like the book. Um, and it was important to us that our, well, our daughter is only three, so she enjoys it, but our six-year-old son was certainly a, a big critic and someone we wanted to please. But we worked so closely with these two young actors on producing the imagery and over an extended period of time and we really wanted them to be proud of it and to be invested in it when it was finished and um, they are and that feels really really cool um, that they they want to see the book they're eager to proclaim their own part in it that feels really great yeah I couldn't agree more I think working with child talent really opened us up to a new level of realism and satire and play that we were able to include that really wouldn't have been accessible to us as adults. I think that's something that, yeah, you, you don't get to hang on to in that same way that you do as a young person. I don't know if there's a perfect reader for the book. Hopefully anyone can enjoy this book, but I, we certainly are eager to reach a reader who likes to draw. And hopefully that's all young readers and youngsters who have a chance to get their hands on this book. We really want to inspire drawing and storytelling in everyone who gets to know our story. Yeah, and I would just add that the story grows out of um, experiences we had as kids. I think all kids do this to a certain extent of making something out of nothing. So one of the key parts of the book is uh, the moment when both kids create their own boats, um, their own specific um, self-designed boats, and we wanted those boats to look a little bit cobbled together because we really we wanted to embrace that moment of childhood when you're you're willing to accept the refinement and or lack of refinement of all objects and just push things together to invent a scenario that's uh, believable in the mind or to make something that actually works, but it may not be pretty, and just all of this kind of um, cobbled together quality yeah. of childhood, which we really love and uh, wanted to promote and um, in the book overall. And and the two actors um, that we worked with, that was the thing that they were most excited about. They talked about how this was their ideal form of play on the weekend would be yeah. to like climb ladders and attach poles to it and tie flags to that and you know, to kind of pretend like they were Robinson Crusoe or something like that. So um, we, w we really wanted to narrate a story that addressed that kind of moment of childhood, and hopefully that's something that readers will, will sense and respond to in the book. Yeah, it's really a celebration of dramatic play. That was the succinct version of what, <laughs> of what I just tried to go through. <laughs> Well, we worked with a, do you mind if I start? Yeah. We worked with a director on a film project um, maybe seven years ago, and when we would build scripts for the, that project um, and others that we have uh, in development with them, 
he, the director would talk about um, wanting to know what the why was. Every, how it, there had to be a why to every story, a kind of a hook, um, an impending need, a, a desire. And he was always sort of coming back, like, what's the why of the story? Why are they doing that? What are they, what are they getting at? And I think we had often told, prior to that, stories in a more abstract form. We were comfortable with a uh, lack of conclusion and a free-flowing quality, which is something we really adore about narratives, but we also appreciated that for this project and this book, we needed to, we needed to have a hook. And, um, and I think that's where the whale came in, um, as that, that need, that desire, and I think mu much of that comes from advice from people like that, at least for me. That's so funny. I, what I comes to mind for me is in con, like a contrast to that. <laughs> so the first thing I thought of when you asked that question was less is more, and yeah. that it's okay to be comfortable with unanswered questions and unclear conclusions, and that there's room in storytelling for the reader to really add that themselves. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true, and that's a, that was a balance was we a tried balance. to keep in the book of where do we keep those open-ended moments um, without it becoming diffuse. That's so. satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> I also teach painting and drawing, um, and uh, I showed a couple of my graduate students some of the images when they came by the studio one day, and they immediately started talking about Nessie and those kinds of myths and stories and that was that was great because I really was hoping that that was the feeling that slightly dark um, almost film noir like quality to the story that we were trying to develop and they really got that right away so that was that was exciting because it was long before publication and proofing and all these kinds of things so um, that was a that was a good moment when I felt like maybe we were we were doing something that was that might work. <laughs> I think what's exciting, been exciting for me has been really seeing a place for this kind of storytelling and this kind of work for children be crafted in, in children's lit and have there be real points of connection, have readers look at our work and think, oh, it's like Chris Van Osberg, or it's like Hugo Cabre, or it's like other things that I know and love, or I have a poster in my room that makes me think of this. But there's now a real breadth in what's available for readers, where we fit into a, a fleshed out space or a space that's actively growing and has attention and excitement. We got started working together out in Washington State when we lived in Seattle, and at that time we would, we shot mostly still photography and also some video and the end product was usually short little video mockumentaries or works on paper for exhibition and galleries. And so we went all up and down the Pacific Northwest looking for fun sites to shoot in and sites that related to the stories we wanted to tell. And the weather is uh, unpredictable out there. So we had a couple of moments, especially on the Oregon coast, on beaches where it was just the two of us and we didn't have much money and we had just packed the car full of stuff and Vito would be in a tiny little pup tent with this peak of a camera lens coming out of the tent um, while we engaged in a performative act. Um, usually me, although sometimes <laughs> both of us, um, of usually something somewhat absurd like a pseudo explorer or a, um, a Wright Brothers-like um, individual trying to do something in that space but it just seemed like weather and tools and things were always working against us but that was kind of the fun of it too is figuring it all out on the fly and bundling ourselves back into the car and going over materials and things like that so we really got started kind of by the seat of our pants and this project was much more professional it was in a photographer's studio and you know, great lights and cameras and all these kinds of things, and that was great, but we still wanted to, we've always wanted to retain that wildness of those first collaborations, so I think that's something we're always trying to maintain, even when projects have grown or there's been a bigger budget or anything like that, we wanted to keep it playful like that. 
Yeah, you sort of read my mind. I think when I reflect on what it's like to collaborate as artists, to me it's about being professional at play and that really all we do is play, but professionally, where we take it seriously and we've thought about it and we've invested time and energy and other people's time and energy, um, but that it really always comes back to dramatic play and that there's a space in there to create great art and tell great stories. Mm -hmm.